Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 21st, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I wrote quickly about an increase that we are seeing in exploit attempts for Atlassian Confluence Server CVE 2023-22518. The vulnerability being exploited here, or at least attempted to be exploited here, is an authentication bypass for the setup restore feature. This vulnerability would allow an attacker to basically upload a configuration to your Confluence server and with that, of course, gain full access, including arbitrary code execution on the Confluence server. Now, this is not a new vulnerability, was uh, revealed very early, first few days of November, and we have seen some attacks against this vulnerability. Actually, we saw a pretty high number, again, very specific sensors early on, but uh, these early attacks, they were more targeting sort of known Confluence servers. What we see now is a lower overall level of attacks, but against more targets, indicating that they're probably just basically hitting random web servers, hoping that they are actually Confluence servers that got missed in these initial scans. Given the severity of the vulnerability, this is certainly something that you should take serious. Now, a lot of organizations that use these Atlassian tools don't necessarily run them on-premise. They may actually use some uh, cloud-based solutions by Atlassian. So then well, they'll take care of patching for you, but certainly something to take a quick look at the IP address doing the scanning is sort of your random digital ocean IP address. I believe it um, is located in England. What's sort of a little bit concerning about this particular IP address is it does appear to be running Atlassian software itself. So it's likely a compromised system. It appears to belong to sort of a health wellness company, a company that does do business with health insurances and apparently a few very large clients. Try to notify them at this point, haven't seen a response yet. That server appears to be exploited for a while now and specifically keeps scanning for various confluence vulnerabilities. Which is also a good reminder, well, uh, if you do come across a server that isn't patched yet, assume compromise in particular if that server is exposed to the public internet. And please leave some contact information on your website uh, or on that Confluence server. There's actually a feature that you can configure to basically have some contact information for an administrator so someone can contact you in case there is something going wrong with that server. And given the upcoming holidays, there may be a rush to mitigate the critical vulnerabilities that are popping up this week to not get compromised while everybody is uh, on vacation or out of the office. So be a little bit careful about fake updates. There is a warning was published by the Israeli National Cyber Directorate. The warning itself was in Hebrew only, so I'm linking uh, to a bleeping computer article about this. And the problem here is that uh, someone pretends that there is a critical update for F5 Big IP. And well, uh, this particular update and then links to a data wiper. The email message being used to distribute this particular threat uh, was in Hebrew and was targeting specific Israeli organizations. But of course, that trick is way too easy to pull off for that not to be copied by ransomware gangs and such. We have certainly seen some of uh, these uh, fake antivirus uh, tools and such that typically targeted uh, end users and consumers, but this update in particular targets IT professionals. So uh, that's why I wanna mention that uh, be aware and don't rush into updating anything Always, always download uh, updates from the manufacturer's website and verify any emails or advisories like this. 
And we've got an interesting vulnerability or a bug in uh, Google's OAuth authentication or OpenID uh, Connect uh, that some companies may rely on to identify users. The big problem here is that you can't rely on the email address being conveyed in these uh, authentication messages. The problem is that a user may, for example, register a Google account for pretty much any email address they wish, does not have to be a Gmail address. And if a user, for example, uses G uses Google to register a corporate email address, well, they will retain access to the Google account even after their corporate email got terminated. And that, of course, then may allow them to continue to authenticate using that corporate email address. This is an interesting problem, something probably a little bit unexpected. I'll link uh, to the uh, blog post by Truffle Security that goes into more details of uh, these OpenID Connect uh, exchanges and particular problems to not rely on the email address in the claim. And I would like to take a moment uh, to uh, remember Adrian, uh, one of our early handlers, uh, just actually looked it up. He published his first uh, diary back in November of 2004, so about 19 years ago. Adrian uh, passed away uh, this week and uh, was a good friend, uh, not just a fellow handler, a fellow science instructor. A link uh, to an obituary that his girlfriend put together that I think does a great job in sort of summarizing his personality and uh, learned a ton from him. So uh, please uh, take a moment uh, remembering all he did uh, for us, uh, published I think it was over 300 uh, different uh, diaries during his tenure as a handler. Well, and this is it for uh, today. Thanks again for listening and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.